Try to gather your thoughts together from wherever they've been, and think about the breath. Notice where you feel it. Try to get grounded right now. The mind's been running around all morning, and now it's time for it to settle back down. And as we're settling, try to make it feel at ease here in the present moment. Because there's work to be done here, and you want to do the work with a sense of ease. In the beginning, there's going to be a struggle. The mind wants to wander off someplace else, and you have to say no. You have to cut, keep cutting it off, cutting it off. Whatever interest you have in the thoughts. The thoughts may wander around for a bit, but you cut off your interest in the thoughts, and that's a large part of the battle right there. We don't have to pay attention to everything that comes running through the mind, no matter how fascinating it may seem. We've got work to do right here. We've got work to figure out how the process of thinking gets started. You want to catch it in stages. It's like having watched a movie. Now it's time to go back and see how the movie is made. Get on the set, get in the cutting room, see how they create all those illusions so that when the lights flash on the screen they seem so real. Part of it is, of course, you could just look at the movie theater. Instead of looking at the screen, go off to the side of the theater and watch from the side, and you'll see the light beam flickering in the air and the people in the audience laughing and crying over the light beam, and begin to realize how insubstantial it all is. And then you actually go on the movie set and see how they made the movie, and you realize there's a lot of pretense and a lot of artifice that goes into this. And when you see that, then you're much less likely to be taken in. So we want the mind to be in a place where it can watch these things and not get sucked into the storyline and not get sucked into the lights and the colors and the flashing beams in the air. And at whatever stage you can catch a thought as it's going out, or you catch your mind as it's going out after a thought, it's all to the good. Different people will find that they can catch it at different stages, but the important thing is that you catch it. And you try to get quicker and quicker at catching it so you can see the subtle movements of the mind that you missed before. And so just learning how to keep the mind with one object, you learn an awful lot about the mind. It's like learning about a river. If you want to know what the currents deep in the river are, try building a dam across the river. You can look at the surface patterns on the water and say, oh yeah, there's water flowing here, but you don't know how strong it is until you actually try to do something. So try to keep the mind with one object, and you'll find that you learn about the currents of the mind, how strong they can be. But you can also learn how to take them apart. If you're not aware of the currents, there's no way you're going to take them apart. They just flow under the surface, and you miss them. But if you try stopping them, that's when, that's when you know how strong they are. Then you have to learn exactly what's involved in stopping them. That's a lot of the wisdom, the wisdom and discernment that comes from the practice of concentration. So even though the mind does wander, don't get frustrated by it. Just remember, remind yourself this is something to learn from, and try to learn your lessons well.